Hey everyone, thank you for joining me on another episode. You know, whenever you decide to join me, morning, afternoon, evening, late at night, it doesn't matter. I appreciate the likes, the looks, the listens. Of course, I'd appreciate you hitting that subscribe and notification bell on my YouTube channel, Brooklyn Baritone. Of course, do that if you want to. No pressure for me whatsoever, though I would like the algorithm to swing in my favor to get more views, you know? Well, oh, first off, thank you for coming. And second off, my last video I put out there and one of my aunts surprised me with a call and it's like, oh, I saw your video. That's so great. But why you have those bags under your eyes? And I said, okay, you know what? Fair enough. Because I have been trying to do some, a little regimen here to get rid of the bags. I do get enough sleep. Because I think that I do. But auntie, I took your, your words of wisdom and I'm going forward to be proactive anyways, you know, but, and also... This shirt right here, you see me rocking for the people who are on YouTube and watch the video. It's Covenant. As you can see, it has different colors. So in case people forget, Covenant is where the rainbow was actually first known as far as um, being used and, and symbolizes the covenant that God, Yah, had with man. This is after the flood. It's Covenant with with Noah. So the covenant that he made is symbol this it is symbolized by a rainbow. And you know the rainbow has been used for so much other things, but anyways, I'm just trying to give attention to my new shirt here that I'm going to throw up on the uh, website. Anyways, I came across a term that successfully articulates what I've been seeing that's been happening for the longest, for decades in, in culture, in politics, and in media, who basically were a minority mindset or, or a problem that affects a minority of people is brought up to the forefront like it's the actual norm and majority problem. In better context, it refers to a situation in which the minority position on a given topic is wrongly perceived to be the majority position or vice versa. Again, it refers to a situation in which the minority position or mindset on a given topic is wrongly perceived to be the majority position or vice versa. This is called pluralistic fallacy or pluralistic ignorance. I have some, some examples here, so don't you worry. So you understand where I'm getting to with this case in point, say with feminism. Feminism has caused society to believe that most men are out to abuse or exploit women. Unfortunately, there are men who have and still do exploit and abuse women. The thing is, it's not all men. It's not most men. It's a certain number of men, which is a terrible thing because a man is supposed to be in a certain position to provide guidance, leadership, foundation for the wife and then for the children and for the household. When men are not there in their position and capacity, it creates a vacuum in which the children and or the women have to now make up for that vacuum. They are not men, so they're not gonna perform that duty the way that a man would and could and should. Whatever the reason is, the man gets up and leaves, the woman pushes him out, irreconcilable differences, whatever it is, it's not good if the man is not there. Now, going back to the feminism thing, what feminism has done has made it mainstream that the perception is most men are out to exploit or abuse women. This is not the case. This is not true. We know that we could look at stats. We could look at families around us. We could look at our own upbringing. Were we all perfect? No, unfortunately. But the problem with that now with the political and societal movement with thinking that the minority of men that actually abuse and exploit women is not taken as the norm, where people think that's what it is automatically. So what this does is causes unethical and lopsided laws, which in turn exploit men. Alimony, child support, or automatically perceived as guilty for any kind of sexual assault charges against them. Now, I understand the alimony thing because in a traditional society, which we are not, the man is the one that usually provides the income. And the woman usually traditionally would be at home to manage everything. 
she's the project manager at home to make sure everything runs smoothly. Unfortunately, if the man decides to get up and leave on his own cause, the woman's left high and dry because chances are she was not building up a form of her own income. So it's going to be harder for her. So in a traditional role, if the man did wrong, the alimony I see should stand. But unfortunately, that's not the case because so many people aren't traditional anymore. As soon as someone doesn't like you anymore, they're bored, or they may feel like they're entitled to be free from you. A woman could just initiate a divorce and leave and end up getting alimony and I'm getting child support, even though it was on her own who decided to do it when a lot of men don't want to leave. So that causes, again, like I said, unethical and lopsided laws where, again, where feminism has definitely had a stake in this and they made society feel that most men are out to get women when that's not the case. I have something else to make make you feel more abrasive. Don't worry. I got some for everybody. When we look at the LGBTQ movement, we are flooded with much of that lifestyle. The way they have incorporated uh, different laws, social acceptances, and even media, definitely in media. The thing is, the LGBTQ population is way less than 10% of the whole, at least the U.S. population. But the way that they are represented is greatly misrepresented because you would think that every other person, you would think that the population would be closer to 50%, being how much that they are put in, in, in media, in headlines, advertisements, movies, whatever the case is. So that is one one of two, well, I have two examples of pluralistic fallacy where the minority position is given is on a given topic is wrongly perceived to be the majority position. The smallest amount of people or impact is now broadcast to make it look like it's much bigger than what it is. And because we are led by our feelings, we are misled by misinformation. Remember, it was like a year ago, two years ago, still in check where they had fact checking and misinformation was a big thing. You would think that people will be a lot more vigilant in looking at a lot of data and researching things for themselves so they could understand if what they're being fed is true. Another example of pluralistic fallacy uh, being that I'm a motorist, I own a vehicle. Thank you for that, Father, for allowing me the means to provide to get a vehicle and register it and pay for it. But on to the one part is, um, especially in New York City, there's a lot of speed cameras up, a lot of red light cameras up. There has been a lot of modifications of many streets now where it is either restricted motor vehicle traffic where it probably used to be two lanes now it's one lane or it used to be two ways now it's one way or they just cut off a street from vehicles altogether because everyone has to go green this is all part of a 15 minute city that's a whole nother issue i could get into that i'm going to get into but not today so now the restriction on vehicles because people have to go green and Vehicles are the bad guy because unfortunately, when you look at the news, it's a hit and we hear hit and runs with the involves a cyclist or a pedestrian the motorist, the motorist bear most of the onus on the road. Yes, because basically a vehicle is like a bulky exoskeleton suit. So we could do the most damage, extreme damage to any one or anything. So we do have to be more vigilant and careful. This is why we have to go through the driver's license course. But many people, when they get their license, they automatically forget all the stuff they learn about the rules and the laws. And unfortunately, it's really the people who are not responsible. When I say people who aren't responsible, it's people who are distracted when they're driving. And it's people who aren't cognizant of their surroundings. People who are unsure. I call them people who lack who lack conviction when they drive. When you're driving, you have to have conviction. You know where you're going, know how to do it, know when to do it, and where to do it, you know? Um, some examples here. What are the main causes of pedestrian accidents? Most people will automatically say speeding, speeding. We have to stop speeding. Yes, speeding is 
dangerous because the higher speed you go is the less control you have over your vehicle if you need to make uh, an evasive maneuver or need to stop. That's granted. That's physics. But from me driving, understanding and looking how reckless so many people are, not reckless drivers, reckless pedestrians and reckless cyclists. What are the main causes of pedestrian accidents? Failing to yield the right of way, which is people who drive really selfish and are not cognizant. Unfortunately, we have too much of them on there. Regardless of what kind of vehicle they have, of course, the bigger the vehicle, the more damage. But either way, it's a vehicle that needs to be controlled properly, right? Right? Crossing a roadway or intersection improperly, that falls on the pedestrians. I've noticed so many pedestrians that fail to yield to the rules of the road. They cross when they're not supposed to cross. So many people jaywalk. So many people jaywalk. And unfortunately, people are walking while in their phones. They're in their phones. It was already a, a hard thing before the smartphones started coming around, but then now people are even more distracted now. And even worse yet, they have their AirPods in. Totally into their social media posts. Totally into that YouTube. Even binge watching while they're watching their your favorite show, Walking. Okay? Another cause, main cause of pedestrian accidents, standing, lying, playing, or working in a roadway. Once again, pedestrians. These are things that people do not talk about because the, the low hanging fruit is to automatically go after cars that speed because that's the money maker for the city. Unfortunately, another cause is having poor visibility. Another cause being under the influence of drugs, alcohol, and medication, irresponsible driving, running into the road. So a good bulk of these incidents where pedestrians get caught up into collisions with vehicles is on the really on the onus of the pedestrian. I am not in any way, shape or form taking away any kind of responsibility from the drivers as we should be responsible all the time. And unfortunately there's a lot of people who are irresponsible and it trickles down. So when certain people, they don't obey the rules of the road when they're driving, that'll cause other people to do the same thing too. They will follow suit. This guy cut everybody off. This guy went through the red light. This guy is speeding down a certain way and he's getting to where he's going. Meanwhile, we're stuck. You know what? I'm going to do the same thing. And unfortunately, that mindset is kind of infected, infectious. But a good bulk of what causes these accidents are pedestrians. So speeding does cause damage and loss of life. But that is the minuscule part of what actually causes issues with pedestrian accidents. I've long known this, but then to see the actual facts here, again, the pluralistic fallacy affects us all. When we do not use logic, when we do not use proper stewardship, when we do not use our God given intellect to look into matters, to see what really matters, what it is, unfortunately, as far as the last thing for the speed cameras and stuff is a money grab because it's the easiest thing to enforce. Instead of people really being good stewards, paying attention to what's going on around them, making sure that their actions are not negatively impacting other people and other things. So with the pluralistic fallacy or ignorance, we have to understand how that shapes us because that is used as a tactic, a tactic. A tactic is usually something from someone who has a target or possibly they identify as an enemy enemy or a target. And they use this tactic against us because they know that we are dumbed down. Again, we walk around with these phones in front of our faces. We are caught up in our feelings, taste great, less filling. And no one's really getting out of their own feelings to actually look at the whole bigger picture and look at all of the legitimate, legitimate facts, regardless of what you're feeling, look at what's really causing problems. Look at what's really being fed to us all the time. Stop going off of your emotions, use logic, use stewardship so we can manage our own selves, so we can manage our resources, so we can manage even these laws that are in place that affect us all. Cause we think that, okay, they made a law for this. Everything should be good. When in fact, the law didn't even really address the, the root issue, it also causes more issues. But I just wanted you guys to, to pay attention to that and be aware of that. That's all I got for today. If you enjoyed this, 
you could look at more of my content on my website at brooklynbaritone.com. I also have merchandise. I got voiceover stuff. I got aerial photography. I got all types of stuff on there. Something for everybody. And I also got, you know, people say merch. Everybody got merch. I got merch, but I like to have a little message behind mine. You can also see more of my video productions on my YouTube channel at Brooklyn Baritone. I'm also on LinkedIn under Corey Ashley. You can find me also on Instagram and on Facebook. You can get the audio version of these podcasts on Google Podcasts, Apple Play, Apple Podcasts, there we go, and Amazon Music Under Podcasts. I'm also on local Brooklyn cable television four times a week on Tuesdays, Sundays, Tuesday. Oh man, I forgot my time. That's terrible. Anyways, you could find me on Brick, <laughs> on, on Verizon, Optimum, RCN, and Spectrum. I have to go re revisit my times while I'm here. Anyways, won't you guys be blessed? Walk good. Don't be a victim of pluralistic, pluralistic fallacy. Use your intellect so you can make the proper decisions so you can know what you're being fed if it's a bunch of bs or if it's actually legit things to make us all better anyways walk good i'm out you hear from me next time